Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. In Acts chapter 3, and I'm going to have to read this. Acts chapter 3, I'll read from verse 19 to 21. Acts chapter 3. From verse 19, verse 19 to 21. And here is Peter preaching to the crowd that came to uh, witness the miracles that he did and the disciples did. He said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refresh shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus. So prior to him sending Jesus this, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must hold back until the times of restitution, not of some things, of all. I think that's why I call it the message, the total package. If God is not through with dealing with you, and you gather the crowd, it's lost forever. Forever, never to be reclaimed. It's like an Esau's, bless, uh, Esau's mandate. If it's lost, it can never be reclaimed. This time and this season will never happen in the calendar of this earth again. So it's an opportunity we must never miss. Here Peter is saying, Jesus will return again, the Jesus will preach to you. But heaven will hold him back and he will come again. Prior to that his second coming, there shall be a refreshing. That refreshing is the glory when he deals with you one-on-one -on -one that he will leave behind. And what will that glory do? And the restitution of all things. That's why in Isaiah 16, we began to talk about the glory. He said, and the glory of God shall be seen upon thee. Then he began to talk. He said, your children will come from far. You shall be not at the side. He said, your light will not be the day by night. And he listed some of that glory. Which means your life will no longer be controlled by the calendar of man, but the calendar of God. He said, the glory of God shall be your light. In your life, a, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one. So, Everything will change. That's what that glory will accomplish. Now, Peter is saying in Acts 3, just before Jesus' prior return, there will be a refreshing anointing on the earth. That is what, that's one of the good side in the pandemic. And it is a personal dealing. When you triumph with God, when Jacob, look, you are designed to win several wars in this life. You are designed to, to have seven major victories in this life. One of the wars you will fight, you're going to wage the war of the soul. And that's why the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare, we call it strongholds, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're going to defeat strongholds. Otherwise, Jude one twenty three will not work unto him who is able to present you faultless before his own very presence with exceeding joy. Number two, you will wage a war against the flesh. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, uh, I, I, he said, I beat my body, I buffet my body, lest after I preach the gospel, I will be a castaway. So you're going to defeat the flesh. You must defeat the flesh. You're going to defeat, you're going to win the war of faith. Say, fight the good fight of faith. There's a war of faith coming, which Jesus fought before Pontius Pilate. There's a war with God. Sorry, a war with Satan. They say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness. So you're going to defeat Satan. You must. Then he says, we're going to wrestle with God. Jacob wrestled with God. And he won. He said, as a prince, you have power with God and men. 
Moses wrestled with God. God said, I will wipe out these people. Moses said, no. And God said, I have pardoned according to your word. Meaning your word has prevailed over my word. It sounds blasphemous, but you must. If you don't, you will not be able to stand with exceeding joy before the great God Jehovah. You must stand before him. You must have wrought all those seven victories. And then you will have your crown and your stars. And then you have your medals. Then they will give you a new name which no man knows. They will give you the white stone in heaven. Then they will give you the throne at the right hand of Jesus. Where you will talk and say, I have overcome. And then you will be able to wow, walk on those streets. Not everybody is going to walk on the streets of gold. Some will be in paradise while some will be in the holy city. It's not everybody. Some will wear robes. In Isaiah 62, robes of righteousness. Some wear garments of salvation. Check, even with a fashion designer, a garment is not the same as a robe. They are different. In heaven, we'll all be the same, but we have divergent status. Go and check when the man and the story of Lazarus and Abraham, he said, Father Abraham, while in hell, he called Abraham in paradise father, but he didn't call Lazarus father. He said, Saint Lazarus, meaning... The status of Lazarus in heaven is low. The status of Abraham in heaven is high. He didn't say, Abraham, come and put your hand in my, in my tongue. That's an insult. That's a man who has wrought victories, who has conquered by faith, not by prayer and fasting, by faith. He has made us in heaven as a general. When he's dying like Stephen, he said, I did. The Bible says, and his Ephesians, Jesus is seated, not standing. For he sits at the right hand of the Father. When Stephen saw him, he was standing. That's how he welcomes the generals when they are coming. His face was glowing like the light. His face was glowing like the light. That's a man going to the holy city. Amen. <laughs> I know that's another, that's what I want to share today. But I just want to prepare you to let you know that in this pandemic, defeat God and get your name changed. I didn't mean change your physical name. And change from supplanter to the prince of God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Don't let people who are in a hurry to collect your offering deny you that privilege. It's good. The Bible says enter his presence with the offering. There's nothing wrong in giving. It has a place even in faith. Amen. So in Luke 18, he's coming for those ones. In Acts 3, it's a time of restitution. In Ephesians 5, from verse 26 to 27, the Bible says he's coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. I'm just giving you hints of what he's looking out for and what he does not want to see that can deny you having that victory and that glory and bring you into that place of restitution of all things. In Ephesians 5, he says that he is coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. The word spot, shockingly, means dead works. We just think the word spot is sin. Yeah, the sin is spots because spots is like a stain. I now understand why one of the elementary doctrines of Christ Jesus is called repentance from dead works. In the book of Jude, he even went further to talk about people abstaining from food, trying to be spiritual. He said it is dead works. He said such people will be removed from the scheme of this glory. Now, he's not talking about just that. People who live their lives not appropriating the grace of God by faith but trying to do works. Works such as, I fast uh, five days in a week. They will alienate the man out of the way because that is self aggravated uh, 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 self-righteousness. They're not looking for that. God is saying, the sports, it says they are weights. So what is disqualifying people are weights. Dead works and also, of course, sins. In Jude, verse chapter, there's just one chapter in Jude, verse 23. He says, Some of those dead works are the ministers you sit under who are clouds without water 
and have nothing to offer other than storytelling. He said, mere sitting under them is a spot that will deny a man this glory that is about to be revealed. I now understand why the churches have to be shut down. Why? Because there are too many ministers who are clouds without water. They don't have an answer. They tell you, don't live in sin, but they don't know what to tell you not to live in sin. They don't have the grace. When Jesus told that woman called to the adultery, go and sin no more. He empowered her by grace. And there was no record she ever sinned. She didn't live in condemnation. She lived with an empowerment not to sin. They don't have the anointing. They don't have the word of God. They don't have direction from God. They are talkers. They don't have proofs, testimonies to attest to the workings of God in their ministry. The Bible says there are spots in your life. And when there are spots, when the trumpet and the rapture sound, this is shocking. The Bible says you will not lift to the sound of that rapture. Meaning, sitting under a wrong pastorate can deny you access into the rapture. And then the great things of God. Why? He said, they, go and read the book of Jude very well. He said, there are spots in your garments sitting under. Praise God. So unto him who is able to present you faultless. To the only true God, the only wise God, the blessed potentate, the Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, eternal rock of ages. The one that's never moved, even in war in heaven. The Bible says, and war, they didn't say insurrection. Please take note, go and read the Bible well. There's a difference between a riot they crush, insurrection you crush, and war. War is bad, and there was war. When they say war, that means there's war in your domain. Look at Syria. That is war. There was war in heaven. He didn't move in the middle of the war. He didn't move his finger. He didn't move his leg. He just sat. The eternal rock of ages and said, Michael, deal with that refract. And they dealt with him, crushed him, and cast him to the earth. The one that nothing has made him move. The only thing that moved him from heaven to the earth is my salvation and your salvation. That is love. That is my God and your God. That is my Father and my Father who will do anything to ensure we make it. He is not a God that goes about killing. When you see people killing, they don't serve my God. They don't serve your God. He doesn't go about killing. He goes about saving. He goes about healing. He goes about helping. He's a compassionate God. They don't call him compassionate and kill on his behalf. They call him compassionate and save on his behalf. That's my God and your God, my Father and your Father, the Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obanikoro, Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium, Surulere, Lagos. Get a copy today. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says to tell you what the entire essence and purpose of all this is. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you totally. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. So why is doing this total package? Because Jesus is coming and Jesus is not coming for a half-baked Christian. He's coming for the total Christian. He's not coming for a Christian who has given testimony of financial breakthrough and is sick. He's not coming for a Christian who is healthy but cannot feed. He's not coming for a Christian that Boko Haram is chasing him. We're going to command lightning from heaven. We will vaporize them. When this dealing is over, we will deal with the insurgents. We will put them where they belong, including their sponsors. We will dry the heavens over the earth. We will make the heaven iron and the earth brass before them. We will burn their chariots in fire, break their bow asunder, and cut their spear asunder. 
We as God's army, we are going to defeat them with the word of our testimony. Many of them will come to Christ, but many of them will be destroyed. We will call fire from heaven like Elijah. It will happen. And it's going to happen in my time and in your time, in my day and in your day. We are not going to be cowered into one space. Never. That's not who we are. That's not who our God is. That's not who our Jesus is. We're going to rise and challenge them to the face of death. And we'll make them understand that death is a spirit. And like Simeon, when we have the word of the Lord with us, then death will be suspended over our lives. Then we will conquer death itself and all his agents. It's going to happen in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. First Thessalonians 5.23 God will sanctify and that's what this glory is coming. It's a total package complete in your spirit, complete in your soul, complete in your body. You know there's a, there's a part in the scripture where we read Third John 2 very familiar passage, wonderful passage. He says I wish it's a prayer also wish Above every other thing, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. That means that believer, his soul is prospering, but he is not prospering because they are praying for his prospering and his health. But they didn't pray for the prosperity of his soul. They acknowledge that his soul is prospering. So his spirit is not prospering. And what's the prosperity of the spirit? Faith. His body is not prospering. What's the prosperity of the body? Part of it is good health. So in 3 John 2, he was praying for girls. And he said, oh, girls, I wish above every other thing that you may prosper and be in health. So that's the prayer, that you will prosper and be in health. Then the next one is not a prayer. Even as your soul prospering. So what happened? His spirit, his soul, and his body. His soul was sanctified, but his spirit and his body was not. No, that's not what we're going to have now. What we're going to have now, your spirit will be sanctified, your soul will be sanctified, your body will be sanctified, and Jesus appears. You say, yes, Lord, we're ready. <laughs> we have put that demon under your feet. We've defeated sickness. We have defeated poverty. We have defeated foolishness. We have defeated lack. We have defeated all things. The Bible says he's waiting that all his enemies will be put under his footstool. will crush all his enemies under his footstool. He's coming for a church triumphant. Then we will hear the blast of the trumpet. Then we will rise triumphant. We're not escaping out of the earth. No, 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 no. When we're going all things like he said on the cross. Seeing that all things being fulfilled. would have seen that all things has been fulfilled. All enemies conquered. Then we'll say like Jesus, it is finished. Then we'll say like John, oh Lord, come quickly. Then he will come. Then we will go. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're looking at the prosperity, the sanctification of your spirit, of your soul, and of your body. Now what is the sanctification of your spirit? It is faith. Now faith gives expressions in different ways. To different people. Amen. I said faith gives expressions in different ways to different people. In Hebrews 11, I'll be reading one of the um, most familiar and also one of the greatest scriptures of the faith message. Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 1. I ask somebody, what is faith? Faith is sometimes of things over the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> and he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. If you look in Hebrews 11, you see a catalog of faith expression. Um, Abel gave and was considered faith. Um, let me say this. Um, I've heard the minister says, if you don't pay your tithe, you could miss heaven. And it's like all hell went loose and people started running him down. Um, when, now I'm not talking about tithe. 
I'm talking about faith being expressed through giving. In Mark 14, the Bible acknowledged a sinner, a woman, who came to Jesus. Now, as a sinner, she's bound for hell. A sinner is not bound for heaven. So if she, even Jesus saying, her sins are many, then she's bound for hell. And that's why you have to be careful when you run down men of God. If they say things you don't understand, clarify before you start running them down. When the woman came to Jesus, she did not ask for forgiveness of sins. Never. Read it well in Mark 14. There are also um, other translations in Luke and Matthew. The woman with the alabaster box of ointment. She was a sinner. When she came to Jesus, she gave her all. And Jesus called that giving faith. And on account of that giving, he said all her sins, which he said are many, are forgiven. She never said a word. Meaning, giving can change a man's eternal destiny from hell to heaven. In some respect, he was correct. But people were running him down, guru, 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 and to some extent, he is correct. That is the Bible. The Bible says, by faith, Abel gave, by which, though, that's Hebrews 11, he being dead, yet, take note of what the scriptures, the Bible didn't say he's speaking, by his gifts, he is still speaking. So, those gifts can speak and make oblation before the Almighty on your behalf. My goodness, Jesus Christ. Satan did a good work sending apostles to come and destroy the doctrine of given. If given can do such, the Bible says the only reason why the earth is not being destroyed by flood is because a man gave sacrifice to God. And God smelling the sacrifice offered by Noah, God said, God did, it wasn't that, it wasn't that Noah went to uh, serve God in the soil. He offered animals as sacrifice to God. When God smelled it, that means they are offerings. When God smelled it, it can affect your eternal destiny, affect your genealogy, and affect your nation, and affect your environment, and affect your tribe, and affect your continent. God said, because of these offerings you have given to me, the earth will never be destroyed with flood again. The only reason why we see rainbow in the sky is because somebody gave. So to condemn giving is an apostolic doctrine of the kingdom of darkness. I may not fully understand how tight can take a man from if you don't give a title, you will not make heaven. Heaven, But there's an element of truth in what he has said as regards giving and eternal destiny. Go and read the scriptures very well in Hebrews 11. The Bible didn't say Abel is speaking. They say his gifts have been speaking. And finally, the angel of God in Acts 10 told Peter, there's a man, a heathen, called Cornelius. His prayers and his arms. Now, he's a heathen. He's hell bound. His prayers and his arms has come as a memorial before God. On that account, go and get him saved and change his eternal destiny from hell to paradise. Two things. His prayers and his arms and his giving. So, it, we can't run away from saying it because somebody is speaking against it. He did not speak against it. Jesus said, give, and it shall be given back to you. He didn't say, don't give. He didn't say, tight. He didn't say, offering. He didn't say, seed. He just said, give. So it is scriptural. It is in order. Now, whether you give a tight of 10%, 2%, 20%, 100%, 
That's between you and your God. For he said, with the measure you give, it shall be measured back to you. So it is between yourself and God. But giving can change the eternal destiny and the lineage of a human being. I'll close with this. The Bible says, I still have more to talk about the talk to package. This will be talking more because I don't have enough time to say that right now. But I'll still be talking about the total package. In Genesis chapter 14, Melchizedek, the priest of God, met with Abraham and gave Abraham bread and wine. And all Abraham, that's why be careful about running that man down. He called it tight. Abraham gave him tight of all. The Bible says Levi in Hebrews, the lineage, the fourth generation of Abraham, paid tight in the loins of Abraham, meaning giving can affect your lineage at least minimum to your fourth generation. Giving, when David wanted to build the temple, it affected his own lineage to a thousand generations. But the Bible says, Levi paid tight in the loins of Abraham, by which he got the priesthood. So, your children and your great-great-grandchildren can assess certain things in Christ Jesus by your giving. We are in a time where God is demanding faith. And one of the things you must understand about faith, the first thing, I welcome any person to the faith world, to the faith message, and to the faith concept is your mindset on how you think. If someone tells you, oh, I can swim from the Pacific Ocean to the Indian Ocean, and I can walk on the Atlantic Ocean, and then part the Red Sea to uh, the Deep Sea, uh, the, uh, which of the Dead Sea to two, and walk in the middle of it, don't say it's impossible. There's nothing impossible in this life. Nothing when it comes to the faith language. When they told Mary, you shall have a son, she did say it's impossible. She said, tell me how it's going to be because I don't have a man. Since you don't intend to use a man, which method do you want to use? Please, how are you going to do it? She did say it's impossible. That's why she preached. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Don't ever believe anything in this life is impossible. Nothing is impossible. All things are possible if only you can believe. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.